Hello and welcome back to tutorial 4 of this video series. In this video, we will try to understand some of the SQS settings. Uh, they are SQS visibility timeout, delay, retention period, message size and receive message wait time. We will go over each of these properties and actually see how changing the values for these properties uh, change your application behavior and how your application logic or your functionality helps you determine the value for these uh, settings. So here we are logged in into the AWS management console and as you can see we have our Q AWS YouTube demo SQS present here. And if you remember in our video one we created this queue with default settings which was default visibility timeout was set to 30 seconds. Message retention period was set to 4 days. Maximum message size was set to 256 KBs. Receive message wait time is 0 seconds and delivery delay is 0 seconds. We will start with our first setting which is default visibility timeout. So let's talk a little bit about visibility timeout and how this is used. So before we go in the usage of it, let's try to understand what, what happens to a message, what is the life cycle of a message, right? So once a message is received on the SQS or it's, it is visible on the SQS, in an ideal case, a subscriber of the SQS will read the message. And in an ideal case, a subscriber should be able to process this message and delete it from the queue. But not all the times we get an ideal behavior and in that case, we can modify and use the visibility timeout condition to handle our message and its processing. For example, we publish message one on the SQS. As per our application logic, we know that this message contains information which needs to be inserted in a database. That's the, uh, the functional part of the message. And uh, uh, the, the below lines are for illustration only. So let's try to understand those lines, right? So say at one o'clock and five seconds, a message is received on the queue. It's visible so that any subscriber of the queue can read it. At one o'clock, six seconds, the message is read by one of the subscriber node. For example, if this message takes 10 seconds to get processed, which means it contains the information, we, we get the information from the message, do some logic work around it, and finally uh, insert in, into a database. And that takes around 10 seconds. So in an ideal case, at one o'clock, 16 seconds, we should be able to process this message completely and delete it from the queue. But at one o'clock 10 second, which is which was middle of the processing of this message, the node fails for any given reason. What happens to the message now? Have we completely lost the message? Or how this message will finally get processed? When a message is read by a subscriber, only a copy of that message is given to the subscriber and the original message is made invisible on the queue for a period of time. This is the visibility timeout value which determines the time for which the message is invisible on the SQS. Once the time expires the message is, and the message is not deleted, the same message is again made visible on the SQS. This means that in our, in our case, uh, if the default value of visibility timeout was 30 seconds, that means, means after it was read, which was at 106 plus 30 seconds, if it, if, if it was, was not deleted, it will again become visible on the on the sqs so when when our node died at at this time then at 1 0, 0, 36 pm the message is again ready for read on SQS.
So this is how visibility timeout works. Let's go and try this scenario using our uh, AWS management console and our subscriber node. So here we are back to our Eclipse and if you remember in part 3 of this video series we created AWS SQS subscriber project and within the project we created a class receive message command. Here we were trying to read the message and after logging the message we were trying to uh, delete the message. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment this line out so that once we read the message the message is not deleted from the SQS and uh, I'm going to uh, terminate this service in my local system. So after some time we should be able to see that the message is again picked up uh, uh, is uh, and available on the SQS and next time when I run the service it will be again available for read. So let's go ahead and start the service. So right now as you can see we have zero messages on the queue. I'm going to quickly create a demo message. And as soon as I create it, it will become available for the read by a subscriber. So now let's start a subscriber. That's the service is starting up and at some point of time, it will read the message from the queue. And there you see, we have the message on the queue. And before 30 seconds, I'm going to kill this service and go back to our console and as you can see here the message in flight is 1 and available is 0 because that message was read by the queue by the subscriber at this point of time but then we kill this node which means something happened and the message after 30 seconds should be back available on the SQS. So here we are back to the AWS management console and if I refresh this console you can see the message in flight became message available again. If I go and look at this message it's the same message which we published the first time demo message and if I no, now go back to our Eclipse and uh, correct our code this message will be read and deleted. So let's do that. So here we are back to our Eclipse and I'm going to uncomment this code which was responsible for deleting the message. I'm going to put this message back to this so that it won't fail and I'm going to restart the service. And now the same message will be read and deleted. as you can see we read this message here and deleted it and now if we go back to the SQS the message will no longer will be available as you can see we're getting empty receives which means that in case where something happens while you are trying to process a message and a node fails or your database is not uh, you're not able to collect to the database and your processing fails before you are trying to delete the uh, message the message using the visibility timeout condition, the setting, the message becomes available again. So uh, in general, the, the value of the visibility timeout should always be a little greater than the amount of time it takes for your code to correctly process the message, complete your functional part and delete the message from the SQS. So the visibility timeout should be always be a little greater than that. So that was all about visibility timeout setting. Our next topic is delivery delay of a message. The next setting we are going to talk about is called delivery delay. When we set this property on, though the message is visible on the SQS, but is only made available for reading once the delivery period is over. So for instance, if you published a message with a, with a delivery delay of 20 seconds at 10005 p.m., it will be only made available for read at 10025 p.m. So it takes 20 seconds for any, uh, the, the delivery of the message will be delayed for 20 seconds for any consumer. So let's try to uh, demo the same. So here we are in our Eclipse and I'm going to start our subscriber project. 
so that it will start reading empty messages from the queue. And uh, once it starts, it will keep on polling and look for new messages. And later we will go to our AWS management console and try to put a message there with a delay of 30 seconds. So as you can see, this subscriber is, is polling our SQS and trying to read messages. There are no messages to read at this point of time. So let's go to our AWS management console and put a message there. So here we are in the AWS management console and we will try to send a message. I'm going to put the body as delay message. And this time I'm going to check this box and put a message delay of 30 seconds. So, and click send message. So as you can see, the message available is one, but when we go back to our, our service, the service will still be reading empty messages. As you can see that our service is still reading empty messages. And once the 30 period delay is over, that message will be received, processed and deleted. So let's wait for that. As you can see, after 30 seconds, the message was picked up by this consumer and deleted. And we can confirm this by looking at the message content, which was delay message. So this is how the delay message property is used. If you want to delay your the, the first read of your message by some seconds or you can go up to 15 minutes so this was all about delivery delay our next setting is retention period what is retention period it is a period of message that it can a message can ever live on the sqs after that it will automatically delete it from the sqs so it is the entire period of time for the life cycle of a message after this if it was read once, twice, thrice, it was processed, not processed, does not matter. If this period expires, the message will be deleted from the SQS. It will be much more clearer when I'll try to demo it on the, S on the AWS SQS Management Console. So let's go to the console. As you can see, we have zero messages available on the SQS right now. The message retention period is at its default value of four days. I'm going to change this value to the minimum allowed. I'm going to configure queue. I'm going to make it one minute, which is 60 seconds. And this is the least value you can ever have. So once I publish a message on this queue, the maximum life of that message without getting processed or processed is going to be just one minute. I'm going to save this change. And now I'm going to send a message. I'm going to call it retention. period and what we will be what we will be expecting is that after one minute this message automatically goes away from the available messages I'm going to send message and close and as you can see we have message available so we just have to wait for 60 seconds and this message should automatically disappear i'm going to continuously refresh this console to show you that here and as you can see after 60 seconds the available message went to zero again the value of retention period is is definitely uh, should be configured keeping in mind your functionality how your publisher and subscriber uh, are configured and what does that message means to you if it is deleted from the queue because of the retention period so all those factors has to be considered before you come up with the value of retention period and which is also true for the all other configuration values like delay of delivery the default visibility timeout all these things have to be kept in mind in concurrency with your uh, functionality what you're trying to achieve functionally 
So this was all about uh, retention delay. We'll move to our next setting. The next setting is message size. The default size of a message is set to 256 KBs and is the maximum size of a message. Why this property is important is you need to evaluate your functionality that what are you actually trying to pass in as a message and does that content is within the limits of 256 KBs. So you don't want to parse your entire files and make it part of the message that can exceed 256 KBs. So again, this, this thing has to be considered while you're trying to de design your functionality uh, around SQS and publisher subscriber model. Our next setting is receive message wait time. Also popularly known as short polling versus long polling. This is the time when a subscriber waits when it makes a call to retrieve message from SQS and there are no messages on the queue. The key part is no messages on the queue. So if your queue is empty, uh, the, the, the value you have configured for this setting, this is the amount of time the call will wait before returning back to the subscriber. So zero actually means short, short polling, which means it's not going to wait and return immediately with empty message. If the value is greater than zero, which means long polling, which means that it will wait for the configured amount of seconds before returning it with the empty message. Another interesting thing to understand is if there is a message, there is no wait time. If, the, if there is a valid message on the queue, it will be returned immediately. So let's uh, do a demo for this. So here we are in the AWS management console and as you can see that the default configuration for this uh, this setting is zero seconds which means we will we will be doing short polling. So let's go to our Eclipse and start our subscriber application and see the results there that how the empty messages are received. So here we are in the Eclipse and I'm just going to start our uh, subscriber application and you will see that the messages will be read one after the other without any wait time. Yeah. So if you notice the logs here, we are continuously reading without waiting. So 09, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. It's because our uh, the, the polling is configured at one second. So the, as soon as the call is made, it's returned back with empty messages. Now we will keep this application running and go and change the settings on the AWS management console for the receive message wait time. So we, here we are back to our AWS management console. I'm going to go to configure queue and make this to three seconds and save changes and go back to our Eclipse to see the results. As you can see, the time reference between the log messages has increased now. So call was made and it waits three seconds before returning back. So you see 30, 33, 36, 49, 42, 45, 48. But as soon as we put a message on the queue, it will be uh, retrieved immediately and it will not wait for three seconds. With this, we are at the end of this video series. I hope you like it and able to derive any value from it. Thank you.